Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Now as you can imagine, whenever you move to a foreign country, there are going to be some weird things, some things you haven't seen before, and uh, sometimes these are cultural things, sometimes these are more things of etiquette. Uh, those things are different in some countries, and I want to go over some of those things with you about Cambodia. Uh, because these things are just, uh, they just might seem a little a little off, a little weird to you at first. I mean, Cambodia, we have a, a saying in this part of the world, you know, same, same, but different. Uh, which means it, 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 it feels like it should, but there's something just a little off about it. <laughs> I guess you can say that. <laughs> uh, but remember, if you like this video, uh, consider supporting us. I have links down below through PayPal and Kofi.com. Uh, those are at the links in the description. And uh, I said it before, I'll say it again, but uh, every every donation helps. Uh, you guys are the ones that keep this channel going. Uh, without you, there wouldn't be a Dave Does Cambodia. And uh, yeah, you guys rock. And uh, we always, always appreciate it. So if you like the video, uh, consider checking out those links. I also have uh, books for sale. I like to write some books. I have five, and those are at the link in the description, and four of those are only a dollar each. So uh, be sure to check out that link. See if there's anything there that you'd uh, like to read. <clears throat> All right, so the, the first thing I should get out of the way uh, about Cambodia is this. Yeah, uh, well, you can find places here, of course, uh, that are nice, that are quiet, uh, very peaceful, very nice. For the most part, Cambodia is a very loud country. Uh, you, you just say there's always a lot of construction going on. You always have a lot of traffic. You always have a lot of people in groups talking. And, and I, I have noticed that a lot of times uh, the locals, they speak in an outside voice all the time even when they're standing right next to each other I guess you can say <laughs> like like there have been times I thought I've heard two people arguing maybe having a fight about something but no they're just having a conversations but their voices are just a little uh, elevated and plus you have all the loud motorcycles and and cars that don't have any restrictions on uh, you know what they sound like or anything uh, so it can be a very, a very loud country. Uh, and that's not to mention if you move into an area <coughs> that has a pagoda or a mosque or you're by a school, uh, you're going to get some, some music. Uh, you know, the mosques, they have a call to prayer, I think, five times a day starting at 4.30 in the morning that <coughs> you can hear from quite a distance away. And, of course, all the pagodas and temples, they'll have their uh, uh, Buddhist ceremonies on loudspeakers and everything. And, and schools, well, you know, just got a bunch of rowdy kids uh, running all around, screaming and yelling. And and those uh, big chiming bells to let them know it's time to come in and stuff. Uh, but even if you're not living near any of those things, and that's not an issue, every area at some point is going to have weddings and funerals and uh, here in Cambodia those are those things can last anywhere from two to five days depending on how much they're spending <clears throat> and they'll put up these big loudspeakers on poles uh, and uh, everything will go through those loudspeakers all the chanting monks and all the blessing ceremonies and all the all the music sometimes even karaoke and those uh, will go on starting again early in the morning and perhaps long into the evening. Uh, not consistently, not like every second of every day, but uh, off and on throughout the day, they'll just start up. And, and a lot of people, they, they might get upset about that. <coughs> but uh, just like with the heat, it, it's just something you acclimate to. It's just something that y you know is going to happen, so it... It almost becomes second nature. You see somebody start setting up a big tent in the middle of the road in front of a building, and you're like, 
okay, there's going to be a wedding here. It's going to be loud for a few days. <laughs> you're just, uh, you just kind of get used to that, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> and it's not necessarily a bad thing. That's something that's not going to change no matter how much uh, you complain about it. Uh, but it is something to keep in mind. Occasionally, even if you live in a fairly quiet area for the most part, you're going to have weddings. You're going to have funerals. You're going to have sometimes barking dogs at night. There's a lot of stray dogs here. And uh, that's all part of what makes it Cambodia. It's just uh, something you have to get used to. Uh, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. You, you just learn to ignore it. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, somebody will say, Man, did you, hear, did you hear that wedding music start out at 5 in the morning? And I was like, no, no, I didn't. I was, I was still sleeping. I can pretty much sleep through it. <laughs> at this point yeah but it's one of those things you have to acclimate to and it's really no big deal but something to be aware of especially when it comes to look for a place to live uh, you want to check out the area make sure if if you want peace and quiet especially in the morning you're not living near a mosque or a temple or or a school or or anything like that and uh, I think you'll be much happier if <laughs> if you check it out first rather than complaining after you move in. Uh, th this next one is a question of etiquette. <clears throat> Coming from the United States, uh, let's say I went out to eat with a bunch of other people. So there were just two couples, four people. You go out to eat at a sit-down restaurant. Everybody orders their food and their drinks. Uh, and generally, in the United States anyway, at these places all of your food <clears throat> will come out at the same time or just a minute or two behind one another so you can all eat together and enjoy the meal and the conversation and things like that <clears throat> and uh, if somebody gets their food first they know it's only going to be a minute or two so it's considered polite to wait to eat until everybody else has been served but here it's different because even in a sit-down restaurant uh, that has a lot of seating most of these places the kitchen is very very tiny they might have a two burner stovetop cook things set up and one person back there doing all the cooking so the wait times between various meals could be very very long <laughs> so it's it's not uncommon to have a, like a sit down with four people at a sit down restaurant each of you order something and have them come out slowly one by one like somebody will get their plate first and then it might be 10 15 and depending on what the the dish is and you know maybe 20 minutes later before the next person gets theirs and then another wait for the third and the fourth <clears throat> and uh, I found out over here that generally when you get your food it's okay to start eating uh, nobody's going to be offended that you started before everybody else got theirs because your food is hot. You don't want it to go cold. Uh, you want to eat it when it's when it's nice and hot, you know. Uh, but, but I remember uh, uh, eating somewhere with uh, with a couple. Uh, it was me and Sing Lai and them, and uh, they were pretty pretty stunned that it took that long. <laughs> you know, I got fish and chips, and that actually came out last but everybody else had their food uh, before mine uh, like a good like the first person was done already by the time I got my my plate of fish and chips but it's just something you have to again it, it's it's more of a matter of etiquette uh, and of course like I said these kitchens are small you usually got one cook in the bag doing all of it so they can't start making somebody else's dish while they're working on the pasta dish over here. <clears throat> They'll wait for that to get done, wash out the, the pans and the pots, and then start on the, you know, on the beef low clack dish. <laughs> and then they'll get started on the curry, and then they'll get started on the fish and chips. So just keep in mind, it's, uh, it's okay if you start eating when you get served in these places like that because you want to eat it when it's hot. Uh, and it's just one of those things here. One of those things you start noticing that you don't think about until it happens. And then you're not sure what the etiquette or the protocol is uh, for that. 
But yeah, I've had that happen several times, and it's okay. When you get your food, uh, go ahead, dig in, and and start eating. <clears throat> uh, also, keep in mind that uh, there's not a tipping culture here in Cambodia. They will accept tips. They're always appreciative when you leave a tip, uh, but it's not. Yeah, it's not mandatory. They don't uh, get angry or give you a side eye or anything if you don't uh, because it's not expected so use your best judgment uh, on whether or not you want to leave a tip I think it's nice they will accept it uh, that's money right in the pocket of the server instead of having to wait for their monthly paycheck so it's always nice but but it's not necessary a lot of people ask that uh, how much do you tip like, well, basically whatever you want <laughs> or none at all and there's going to be no nobody's going to look down on you if you if you do or if you don't it's like I've been at uh, street food places which t typically at the, at the street food place you don't tip uh, but I've had things that were so good that at the end when I paid I just you know, let them keep the extra you know 50 cents or whatever and, and they didn't understand at first why I was doing that <laughs> like no I owe you Fifty cents, and I, I'm just saying, no, you keep it. It was so good. I don't care. It was, it was good. <laughs> it was perfect. Uh, and now let's talk about tuk-tuk drivers. I, I know a lot. I, I still hear people getting upset. Like, oh my God! Every time I walk down the street, all I hear is, "Hey, you want a tuk-tuk? Hey, you want a tuk-tuk? Hey, you want a tuk-tuk?" And yeah, you know that. It, it, it can be annoying at times, especially when you got five in a row and you say no to the first guy, but the uh, but then the second, third, fourth, and fifth guy they ask you the same thing. So you you're just walking down the street going, no thank you, no thank you, no thank you, no thank you. Uh, but yeah, you got to consider, man, they're just out trying to make a living, and you don't know unless you ask. So and usually just saying no thank you, that's uh, uh, that's fine. That's they'll leave you alone. Uh, no further problems needed. But but I will tell you this. Uh, uh, I I know I mentioned this before, but uh, marijuana is illegal in Cambodia, except for certain happy pizza places that put it on their pizza. Uh, but other than that, it's illegal. And uh, you'll get a lot of tuk tuk guys, and uh, you know they'll ask if you want to ride. You say no, and then they'll immediately go to, hey, you want some weed? I, I got some good weed. I got some really good marijuana. You want some marijuana? <laughs> uh, and uh, just a warning again: uh, do not buy or accept any kind of uh, weed or any other drug from uh, random people here, <laughs> especially tuk tuk drivers. It, it, it's a it's a known scam that if you buy weed from certain tuk-tuk drivers, because he's giving you a great deal on a bag of weed, you know, and who doesn't like to get high every now and then? Uh, but if you do that, he'll call his police buddy up the road. They'll stop you. They'll find the weed. They'll threaten you with jail and big, huge fines. And and of course, you'll yeah. you'll give them a bribe so you don't get in trouble because you don't want to go into a Cambodian jail. Uh, and then they'll take your money, your little bribe. They'll take your weed. Uh, the tuk-tuk guy will get the weed back to try to sell it to the next unsuspecting person, and they'll also get a cut of the of the of the bribe you offered <laughs> not to go to jail. And uh, apparently, it, it still works enough because you still see that all the time, especially downtown. Uh, hey man, you want to buy some weed? Hey, you want to buy some weed? Uh, but speaking of that, here's the thing that really cracks me up. Like, uh, if you say no to the weed, uh, they offer something extreme next. Yeah, like there's no in between. Like they'll say, hey man, you want to buy some weed? And you'll say, no thank you. And they'll say, okay, how about some heroin? <laughs> I'm like, whoa, 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 yay, man, you, you you missed out on a whole lot of things between weed and heroin that, that maybe I'd want to buy, you know. <laughs> you didn't mention any shrooms, you didn't mention any acid, I mean, uh, you're kind of going from, you know, one extreme all the way up to the to number 11 there. 
uh, but I guess their thinking is, oh, he doesn't want weed, so he, 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 must, he must want some heroin. <laughs> no, I don't want that either. But uh, just keep in mind, it's best not to buy from these guys because uh, you probably find yourself in a lot of trouble. And at the very least, you're going to be embarrassed when you find out you didn't buy anything except something that looked like the product thing really wasn't. So, yeah. just something to keep in mind. But don't be mad at the TikTok guys for asking if you want to ride. That's how they make their money. And uh, just say no thank you. And uh, yeah, everything will be fine. All right, so I hope that helps. There are three different weird things you're going to find here that uh, you might be confused about when you first arrive. Uh, hopefully this information will give you some guidance along the way so you don't feel too bad. And uh, as always, uh, check out all my links down below. Like I said, I have PayPal, I have Kofi.com. You can buy my books down there. You can find all the other channels of vlogging from this part of the world. They are listed down below. Uh, so you can watch and uh, like their videos as well. And uh, from CM Reap Cambodia, I will talk to you guys in the next one.